Good evening, everybody. Oh. Paramaha Krishna Sachidananda Vigraha Anadiradir Govinda Sarvakarana Karanam I render my salutations to the rootless root of all and the causeless cause of all. I place my prostrations at the feet of all the liberated masters and I thankfully render my salutations to the divinity which is inherent and innate in all of us. Thank you very much Mr. Vasudev and Mrs. Vani Vasudev, the directors of Meditation and Study Circle for giving me an opportunity to speak in this particular platform. My association with Meditation and Study Circle goes back to around 23 years. I have been so fortunate to be associated for such a long time with this particular platform. I remember my master, my mentor, my philosopher, my guide, Mr. S. Krishnamurti, and also Mrs. Rukmini Krishnamurti for having nurtured me and for having, for having guided me through this particular course of public lecturing. I get very fast connected to the audience whenever I speak through this platform. I, I, I really feel the vibes of spiritual uh, sadhaks. Most of the audience uh, who attend regular lectures in this platform are very knowledgeable and have been persuading spiritual sadhana very seriously. And uh, they really evolved. So I can definitely connect to them at a subtle level very fast. And I thank the audience for being enlightened and knowledgeable audience. With this, let us begin uh, the discourse for today or the satsang for today. The topic is learn to learn. Uh, we can also read it as learning to learn. No problem. Both are same. Learn to learn is a call. Learning to learn is a process. The call learn to learn asks you to learn the way you learn. Let us get into the core aspect of this particular topic a little later. And let me just give you a prelude to this topic. Do you all think learning is a sacred act? Is learning a sacred act? This is the question. It's a natural act. People can type on the chat. Yes. It is a natural act. Is it sacred? Is it a sacred act? Certainly. Why it is a sacred act? We'll just look into it after a little while. But at this point of time, let us assume learning is a sacred act because we all have been sent to this world so that we learn our lessons and go back with a matured mindset. 
there is a law of nature the law is the law of evolution existence expects everything to evolve from a small subnuclear particle to a mega galaxy everything is evolving to evolve means to mature to become more expert to learn something new so if we have been sent to this world to learn lessons and grow mature with the lessons that we learn certainly learning should be a sacred act this life is a mega school and it provides several opportunities for us to learn we learn through seeing what's happening in the world we learn by hearing so much about what's going on in this world and we learn by reading books we learn by doing something we learn by practicing something we learn through our experiences if we are ready to learn life offers n number of opportunities those opportunities which are provided by life so that we learn are called learning opportunities lessons are present in every circumstance that we face in life lessons are there everywhere in this universe lessons are there to learn and these lessons are either overt or covert overt means the lessons are present on the surface the moment you experience you come to know that this is a lesson the moment you see something you know this is a lesson the moment you hear something you know this is a lesson but certain times the lesson is hidden the lesson is concealed the lesson is not obvious we need to explore the experience internalize what we have gone through and then we would learn so nevertheless whether it is present superficially or whether it is hidden deeply every circumstance offers lessons some of them are life lessons which we can never forget in life there is a saying not one saying rather i will be placing two important sayings which are so popular in the field of knowledge the first saying is life is for living do you agree life is for living i do agree life is for living god gave this life so that we live but what is living and how you understand what is living is a different aspect i don't want to dwell into that particular aspect as of now in fact i have covered this topic life is for living in one of the earlier lectures in the same platform let's not get into what is living but there is a popular adage 
life is for living are we living is a different question let's not go into that life is for living there is another adage which is also very popular life is for learning life is given to us for learning whether you like it or whether you dislike it please understand you have come to this world to learn lessons there is absolutely no doubt about it so we have two adages in front of us the first adage is love life is for living the second adage is life is for learning let us write down these two adages one below the other what are the first words in these two sayings the first word is life life is for living life is for learning so the first word is life and life in both the sayings that means to say the first words are same in both the sentences if that is that is correct the last two words also must be same and you should be able to equate those two last words which are the two last words in the two sayings the two last words respectively are life is for living living is the last word life is for learning learning is the last word so living is equal to learning you just look at these two adages in the perspective of mathematics or algebra if two things on the left side are equal two things on the right side must also be equal this is what your trigonometry or algebra says i am applying same principle or same law here if life is life living is learning so if you carefully observe and if you mathematically decipher this you come to know living is nothing but learning if life is living and living is learning they are all one and the same a person is said to be living as long as he is learning knowingly unknowingly if he is learning he is living please don't think as long as a person is breathing he is living yes biologically if a person is breathing if there is blood circulation if the heart is beating the person is said to be living that is a biological way of looking at things but philosophically spiritually a person is said to be living as long as he is learning the moment he stops learning he is no more living he is more dead than alive he is more dead than alive if he stops or if he ceases learning i have heard of a great saint and this saint was actually traveling by train he was almost 80 years old and he was a well known saint in india few passengers were also traveling with him in the same train in the same compartment this saint being so old he was learning japanese language at the age of somewhere around 80 plus years he was struggling to learn he was going through those books which are giving him a view of japanese language 
all the time intensely he was involved in writing the Japanese alphabets and pronouncing it and learning it. The passengers around him were watching him keenly and surprised. One of the passengers asked him, Swamiji, how come you are learning Japanese at the age of 80 plus? What will you do after learning Japanese at this age? The Swamiji calmly answered him, My dear son, I consider that learning is living. And as long as I am learning something new, I am satisfied that I am living. The moment I stop this learning process, I consider I am more than dead. This is the answer for your first question. Why are you learning Japanese? The second question, what do I do with it? What do I do with it is something which I don't know as of now. And I need not know. If I learn something new, then how to use it, how to apply it, I will learn in the later phase. There is immense potential if I learn Japanese because I can learn a new literature. I can learn lot of pre prevailing Japanese spiritual thoughts, notions, beliefs and ideas. And I can use this particular knowledge to teach others, which I do not want to bother as of now. But as long as I am learning something new, I am highly satisfied, I am fulfilled, and I consider I am living. Look at the perception, attitude, and the way of living by this Swamiji. The moment we stop learning, we become like stagnant water. We rot, we stink, we wither, and we die. So please, for heaven's sake, don't stop learning. Create learning opportunities for yourself. Life is a mega school, I said. If you want to learn, life gives you abundant opportunities. Even if you don't want to learn, life throws abundant learning experiences. Hence, the statement living is learning becomes very important. Life is living, living is learning, they are all one and the same. And if we stop learning, we are no more living. If we are no more living, we are not living life at all. Or we are not with life. Life is equated ultimately to learning. Are we living is the question which I asked earlier also. Even now I will ask you the question. Are we living? The other way to ask the same question is, are we learning? Because if we are learning, we are said to be living. So let us not address the question, are we living? Rather address the question, are we learning? Learning is a science. It is also an art. Learning is a science because there are so many books. There are so much of scientific research studies which are done on learning. To understand what is learning, how learning happens, what amounts to learning, 
what are the different phases of learning there is immense research done i have dr chandru professor and head of the department of biochemistry from uh, uh, hubli government medical college online here he is one among the audience sir i am happy to see you here myself and dr chandru both of us did our uh, postgraduate uh, studies in health professions education from kelly university in belgaum in the year 2015 i completed it sir is also as senior as me and we both were really senior people along with one another person and we enjoyed that particular course because we were learning to learn there what do i mean by it the very first session was offered by one dr mark gelula who had come from uh, university of illinois chicago in fact all our teachers majority of them were from university of illinois in us it was a collaborative course and our faculty were from there the very first course was on learning theories dr mark gelula basically an anatomist but he was an expert in learning theories took sessions for us he taught us about what is learning he placed so many theories of learning to us why i am saying all this is there is so much of science so much of research done to understand how people learn and what amounts to learning and what are the phases in learning process we read about merrill's first principles miller's learning pyramid ganier's learning theory bandura's social learning theory these are all some learning theories wonderful conceptual frameworks or models and researchers have extensively researched to know that this is the way human mind learns all these research outputs and models clearly scientifically explain and discuss how we learn and stages of learning that's the science of learning but learning is a subtle process is also an art learning is a fine art it cannot be taught science can be taught how art can be taught if learning is a science yes it was taught to us we studied in the books there is so much research output on it my professor taught me that scientifically he taught me but if learning is an art and if it is a fine art how art can be taught it has to be learned on your own nobody can nobody can teach the art of learning probably everyone i mean many people can teach the science of learning if life is living and living is learning imagine how difficult it is to teach life or living or learning to others is extremely difficult extremely difficult mankutimana kagga is a wonderful product of dv gundappa i always consider dvg as a great researcher great philosopher and a great spiritual leader i see science i see philosophy i see religion i see art in his mankutimana kagga what a evolved what an evolved soul it was he wonderfully writes in one of his kaggas about life and learning he says jeevana vadondu kale 
ಕಲೆಯ ಕಲಿಸುವುದೆಂತೂ ಸಾವಿರದ ನಿಯಮ ಯುಕ್ತಿಗಳ ನೊರೆ ದೊಡೆಯು ಆವುದೋ ಕುಶಲತೆಯೊಂದಿರದೆ ಜಯವಿರದು ಆ ವಿವರ ನಿನ್ನೊಳಗೆ ಮಂಕುತಿಮ್ಮ ಜೀವನವದೊಂದು ಕಲೆ ಕಲೆಯ ಕಲಿಸುವುದೆಂತೂ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಟೀಚ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಹೌ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ if life is learning if life is living if you can equate life to learning how can anybody teach life or how can anybody teach what is learning the art of learning can never be taught kalaya kalisu dentu saavirada niyama yuktigala nore dodeyum the mean means uh, there are probably thousands of laws and thousands of tacts which you may use to understand life and to understand learning although you try thousands of laws and thousands of tacts you don't understand you don't get the grasp of life or learning unless and until ಆವುದೋ ಕುಶಲತೆಯದೊಂದಿರದೆ ಜಯವಿರದು ಆವುದೋ ಕುಶಲತೆ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಆವುದು ಆವುದೋ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಸಮ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಅನ್ಲೆಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಜಯವಿರದು ಯು ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸಕ್ಸಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಆರ್ ವಿಕ್ಟೋರಿಯಸ್ ಆ ವಿವರ ನಿನ್ನೊಳಗೆ ಮಂಕುತಿಮ್ಮ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆವುದೋ ಕುಶಲತೆ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಲಿವ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ ಆ ವಿವರ ನಿನ್ನೊಳಗೆ ಮಂಕುತಿಮ್ಮ ದೋಸ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಕಾಲ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಬೈ ಡಿ ವಿ ಗುಂಡಪ್ಪ please get inside to learn how to learn or please get inside to learn the life lessons learn to learn or learning to learn is a wonderful concept where students or learners direct their learning and know how they learn best you need to direct you are learning and know how you learn best it is within you you need to explore you need to understand and you need to actually get a hang of it or a grasp of it learning to learn is particularly important when teachers are no longer there for you as a source i am stressing this sentence learning to learn or learn to learn becomes an extremely important concept when you don't have teachers to teach you as a source for teaching as a source for learning none of us have teachers none of us have teachers sir we were taught by teachers what are you saying we were taught by teachers in the elementary school in the high school in the pu days in the graduation days in the post graduation days there are so many teachers sir they have taught us yes they are all teachers i agree but they are not masters they taught you at a level that's all but you are indebted to them no doubt no doubt carry that gratitude but uh, dv gundappa in one of his kagas wonderfully says guru varu ninagaharu neenobba tabbaliga sikkida kelade angelenu thindu dinakale ninage neene guru o mankutimma guru varu ninagaharu who is there as master for you man you don't have any masters no 
you are your master your awareness is your master that is why lord basaveshwara also said arive guru your awareness is your guru so many times in life the situations that you face in life the, the circumstances that you come across in your life teach a lot of lessons to you if you are wide open to the lessons which are present in those circumstances learning when happens effectively you move from unknown to known and known to transformation when effectively you learn you change from insight anything if you learn effectively if you learn to its effect you should change you should change from inside and you should change from outside learning means knowing internalizing practicing evaluating and adopting something which is hitherto not a part of your life learning is knowing internalizing practicing evaluating and adopting these are the stages in which you learn and when effectively you learn the last step is adoption adoption means whatever you learn when you evaluate and if you find it worthwhile you transform yourself you change yourself if you are not changing if change doesn't happen with respect to your skills attitude behavior then we can say you have not learned the lesson you simply think that you are learning when you listen to this lecture what i am delivering it is nothing but a clutter of words maybe i am putting it in an organized manner by uncluttering it but it is nothing more than a cluster of words a group of sentences probably meaningful or probably partially meaningful just because you heard this lecture can i say that you did learn the lesson or you did learn something new no learning is not just hearing listening it is not just shravana it is not just shravana shravana is just the initial step as dictated by our scriptures shravana is just the very first step by listening how many people changed in life very few very few you need to move after listening what are you supposed to do you should move further what you listen should get into your chitta manana when you keep reinforcing what you have learned what you have learned if you keep memorizing if you keep reinforcing if you keep repeating if you keep contemplating on whatever has been heard by you it amounts to manana even then learning is not complete 
after manana you should get into the next process called nididhyasana nididhyasana means internalizing it internalizing means digesting the facts digesting the information digesting the knowledge when the knowledge gets translated into wisdom nididhyasana is the most important step even then learning has not happened completely i say you have not succeeded in learning completely even after getting into the stage of nididhyasana the most important and the last step is your nididhyasana or whatever you have internalized must be practiced by you you should adopt it unless adoption occurs there is no change in you there is no change in me if such a change does not happen learning is incomplete i say shravana manana nididhyasana parivartana so whatever became a internalized wisdom in you should result in totally transforming you if not totally at least to an extent you need to be transformed that is nothing but from a caterpillar to butterfly you know how beautifully a caterpillar in a cocoon undergoes transformation and a butterfly comes out of it so learning is a process where you should you should start adopting start practicing and start getting completely transformed i just share one or two experiences with you uh, which clearly suggests learning is a joyful act you feel so joyful when you learn something new just a week back my granddaughter was at my home and as uh, mrs vani vasudev said rightly i was babysitting and i took her to a garden nearby a park nearby and there were slides and there were swings and all uh, i have been taking her uh, quite often to these parks and she plays with the swing but for some reasons she was hesitant to play the slide where she has to climb up the steps and then slide through that particular inclined slide but you know on that day there were hardly any children playing around there she was hesitant she was scared probably she was fearful we were trying to get her out of that initial fear or fear of unknown and that particular day after playing swing for some time <coughs> she just walked to the slide and she climbed one step i encouraged her to climb i held her hand as she climbed she reached the top and i made her sit at the edge of the slide on the top and she doesn't know how to actually push herself down on the slide i encouraged her to do that she was about to get up and just leave her attempt because she was scared i motivated her by patting her on the back and i just pushed her a little bit and as she was sliding i came down and i caught her as she landed the moment she landed safely you know she was clapping her hands she was so full of smile and laughter she was giggling she was so cheerful she was so excited you know why she was so excited looking at the slide she is jumping on the ground for the first time in her life she could succeed sliding and she safely landed 
she enjoyed that moment you know why she enjoyed because learning is truly a joyful act she knows that she did learn something and something that is new and it gave so much of joy to her when we learn why don't we enjoy that particular moment how come children enjoy when they learn something new because for children everything is a wonder everything is new everything is fresh everything is novel but we people as we grow our mind becomes so mechanical we don't see anything with wonder we lose that sense of seeing things with wonder everything becomes a routine however new that particular thing that new thing may actually ama may be amazing us but we are not joyful learning in fact is a very joyful act we have experienced it for some time some people enjoy it for a long time because they have not that sense of seeing new things with wonder but we people have grown quite mechanical and converted the whole life into a mechanical act when you learn you change see that's what happened with my granddaughter she started pushing me to take her to the steps and she successfully climbed the steps and many times she has played that slide on that day and thoroughly she enjoyed for half an hour or so and she was still reluctant to leave the place i forcibly i brought her back home she was enjoying it why are we not like children because our mind is so much conditioned so much preconditioned we are not ready to unlearn unless we unlearn we cannot learn and unless we unlearn we cannot enjoy the learning and the process of learning and when you learn a change that happens with respect to the result of internalization of lesson if transformation has to happen please remember probably this is one of the reasons why we don't enjoy learning if 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 learning has to happen transformation has to happen and if transformation has to happen world should die world should die or world must die to give birth to the new new cannot grow unless the old dies but the problem with us is we retain the old and try to grow with the new when such a thing happens our learning is incomplete see nature works like this the seed must die to give birth to a tree isn't it if the seed wants to remain as it is it can never give birth to the tree at all as the seed sprouts and as the sapling grows gradually the seed has to give away has to give away and make a way for the new thing to appear the seed disappears and over a period there is a tree without the seed dying tree cannot emerge out of it but unfortunately we are not ready to unlearn we are so preconditioned we are so hard stuck we carry our old notions ideas our own perspectives our own beliefs our own faith we are not ready to leave whatever we have learned in this life unless you empty yourself how can something new can be filled into you in simple words transformation happens 
only when you die to the past and embrace the present. True learning amounts to such a radical shift in our perception, in our attitude, in our behavior. You all know about it. But many of us are not ready to move even one inch and change. I told you change is the most important sign of learning. How much have we changed? We have been engaged in spiritual sadhana. How much we have changed? If we have changed, yes, we are learning actively. We are active learners. There is a simple learning model which is probably given in several textbooks and we learn in the classes of learning theory. Learning theories. The model is called AITA. AITA, A I E T A model. It's a conceptual framework. A I E T A. This is an acronym or an abbreviation. A stands for awareness. The first alphabet A here stands for awareness. I stands for interest. E stands for evaluation. T stands for trial. And the last alphabet A stands for adoption. What is the first A? Awareness. What do I mean by it? Awareness means you come to know about something new, something which you do not know hitherto. You come to know. That is what is awareness. After coming to know about something new, you show some interest. That is the second phase. Many people, when they come to know about something new, probably awareness they have entered, but they may not be interested in it. They may think that this is not of interest to me, not to my taste or not to my liking. So they stop there only. Okay, it doesn't matter, no problem. In case if it is interesting, how do you move in the learning process? You get into the second phase called interest. You show inclination, you show liking to it, and you are probably excited to know more about it. And then what the mind does, the mind searches for information and you start evaluating. Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it beneficial? Is it harmful? Should I know or should I not know? Should I spend more time on it or not? So you start evaluating and then you also ask the question, what are the benefits? What are the benefits to me? What are the benefits to my family? What are the benefits to the society? What are the benefits to the country? What are the benefits to the world? Probably you have many questions, pro and cons. You start thoroughly evaluating. And if you think after evaluation, it is something that you have to learn, then you go through trial. T stands for trial. I.e. In the AITA model, T stands for trial. Trial means you work it out. Whatever you came to know, you work it out. Or you try it out. When you try it out, and if you come to know that it works for you, then what do you do? The very last thing that you do is you adopt it. Adopt means I find it beneficial. I made it a part of my life. I start practicing it. I start utilizing it. Somebody spoke about yoga and yoga is the path for self-revelation or enlightenment or yoga as the path for stress-free life. Somebody after hearing to the Patanjali's uh, famous uh, sutras, uh, they developed interest. 
after developing interest they got into that information more deeply and then they started evaluating whether this is for me should i use it what are the benefits then they started evaluating am i ready for it or should i change a bit before and what are the pros and cons and then they tried it out when they tried it and it started working and the stress started reducing in their life it became a part of their life and every day morning they start their day with yoga and it became a part of their life this is what is aita model and this is how we do learn this is what our ancestors said also shravana manana niti dhyasana <coughs> excuse me parivartan parivartana when parivartana has hasn't happened or when parivartana fails to happen learning is said to be incomplete that is the reason why i titled my lecture for today as learn to learn learning is not just hearing listening showing interest learning is beyond all this learning happens only when you take this process to its logical conclusion called adoption where you practice where you check out where you try it out and come to a conclusion and when that particular thing becomes your habit or your routine or when it transforms you from inside or from outside i just like to share two anecdotes with you people a person attended few lectures of azhar khaiwan Azhar Khaiwan was a Persian saint. He was basically a Parsi. Zarathustrian he was. He was from Persia. He migrated to India. He settled in Persia and he was conducting a lot of spiritual discourses or what you call satsangs. A person attended a series of lectures given by Azhar Khaiwan on spirituality. This person was so impressed by the lectures of the saint and he decided to become a fakir just like Azhar Khaiwan. He was also motivated to become a fakir. He decided to become a fakir. So what did he do? He stood in front of the saint and with folded hands said master i have decided to renounce all the funds of world no more i want to enjoy the funds offered by the world i have already sworn that i am going to get out of my family world and family bonds i want to be just like you the saint azhar kaiwan was very happy to know that at least one person in the group after listening to his series of lectures has come forward with an intention to change himself and become a fakir and engage in providing the spiritual benefits to the people so azhar kaiwan was also impressed equally by the disciple by the student's intention so azhar kaiwan said my dear boy it's good that you decided to change please go ahead i'm impressed after few months maybe around 3 4 months or so it so happened that incidentally Azhar Kaiwan met the same person in a social gathering. This person had not changed at all. He was looking same old as he was. There was absolutely no change in the way he was looking, in the way he was behaving. Azhar Kaiwan. just met that person 
saw him and he was very clear that the person has not changed even one inch after expressing his intention a couple of months back that he wants to become a fakir <laughs> he has not changed at all so azar kaiwan stood in front of him keenly looking at his eyes the student the person was ashamed he stood in front of azar kaiwan again with folded hands and said master i am still stitching the long gown which is required for a fakir to wear and i am preparing a staff which is required for the fakir to hold in the hand once the work is over i'll soon become a fakir azhar kaiwan smiled at him and said look my dear student people become fakirs to leave everything but you seem to be racking your head to prepare some things to become fakir you leave this place because you are not yet ready to change your learning is incomplete he said there's a wonderful message here a lot of us are like that person we get impressed we get motivated but many times that doesn't last for a long time that doesn't bring complete change in us we stop somewhere in the middle we hear so much we should not gossip we should not waste our time we should be honest we should be sincere we should be hard working we should not be lustful we should be passionate about our work we should consider work as worship we should lead a simple living we should we should we, we should reduce our desires so many things we do here we do listen but how much change is happening that doesn't mean to say you should not you should worry about why am i not changing i'm not asking you to worry about it please please become aware that learning is a long process and you need to hang on don't be too critical or self critical don't be over critical but be aware when you are aware transformation happens on its own perhaps such a transformation to happen the most important thing that we need is total awareness probably our awareness is incomplete that is the reason we do not move long we do not hang on we do not continue we do not change and caterpillar doesn't become butterfly at all and it will die in between and unless such a change happens unless such a change happens learning is incomplete your life is incomplete because life is learning and life is living your living is also incomplete as you grow how much of maturity should come to us how much we should change from inside it's not that we grow 60 years 70 years 80 years this age should not matter if learning has to happen we do not grow old we grow elderly see there is a lot of difference between growing old and growing elderly if you think you are growing old then probably you are not learning if you think you are growing as an elderly person 
you understand life in a better perspective. Vruddhapyatana alla, hiritana varveku. Vruddhapya yellurigu varatte. A vruddhapya da jatake hiritana anod varlila andre. Yena agatte andre, vruddha radru nu nao badla girala. Yavag nao badla gadil wo. Aga, nam in the samasigur dubavi satte. Namma pili gegu. Nama Makala Piligegu, Nama Mamma Makala Piligegu, Ajakajantra Vetia Saida. Now Rudder Sumane Rudderagi Beledre Nama Kalpanigalo, Nama Anisikegalo, Nama Nambi Kegalo, Nama Vishwasabu Idana, Nama Kiria Pilige or a male hair tahoktivi. Our Swatantravana Kaditivi. Our Yochisu Darige. Now, Marga Darshana on a Nidbeke Horto Wataya Maron Tahakuna Magilla. How are you going to Marga Darshana Beku? We should not be compulsive and we should not impose things on our next generations and next to next generations. Vruddharage. Beleo Badlu Hiri Ragi Belibek Ahiri Tana no the Borodo Kalike and no do Paripurna Matahodaga. When our learning is incomplete, when we fail to learn throughout our life, when we fail to change for the better, when we don't mature over a period of time. We become a burden in the family. We definitely become a burden in the family. Why I am saying this is probably there is a lot for us to change. And it's high time that we change. And it is the time that we change. If we don't change even now, probably in this life, we remain like this only and half cooked we go back and perhaps the mission of life is a failure i can say i just place you with one more anecdote which gives a fair idea how we sometimes fail to learn by sticking to what we have learned till now and not ready to unlearn. As I have been saying right from the beginning, unless we unlearn, we cannot learn. Unlearning is the process of emptying yourself from all your past and from your conditioning. There were two retired people and they were very close friends. They did not know each other till they got retired. They were not friends till then. After retirement, it so happened, they became friends. How did they become friends? Because they used to meet, meet each other every evening in a local bar or local pub. In the local pub, Every day they used to meet by 7 p.m. Probably that was a small village. And in that village, there was a local pub. These two retired people used to visit that pub in the evening by 7 o'clock or 7 p.m. And sit across a table, drink till 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the night and go home after heavily drunk. So they were the friends and they became friends by meeting each other in the local pub. Every day they used to come in the evening short by 7 o'clock and used to stay till 10, 11 o'clock in the night. And they used to share the table and they used to drink. The bar owner, the bartender, the customers there, the bearers everybody knew very well that these two are regular visitors 
and their close friends. One day it so happened that one among these two persons came sharp at 7 p.m. and he sat in front of his regular table, same table they used to sit every day. So he sat in his regular table and he started drinking and he was waiting for his friend. The friend did not appear. It was 8 o'clock, 8.30 p.m. So this person started becoming restless because such a delay never used to happen. The other person did not come at all and it was 9 p.m. This person became so restless, he was waiting for his friend for a long time and he called one of the bearers there and asked him, do you know what happened to my friend? We used to regularly sit here and have drinks, no? Do you know anything about my friend? He hasn't come today. I'm worried. And as he was asking this question, one of the bearer at the other end of the room overheard him and he rushed to him and said, Sir, your friend who was heavily drunk yesterday night, before you left the pub, he was heavily drunk, you know very well. He went home and he, want, he was about to sleep. His son had lit a candle in his room since there was a power shutdown. Since there was a power shut down and there was no light, his, his son had lit a candle in his room and he was about to sleep and he was about to lie down and he thought, uh, why this candle in the night when I am sleeping? And he tried blowing air from his mouth in order to put off the candle flame. but. His breath was having so much alcohol and alcohol is such a material which gets ignited very fast. Since he blew air to put off the flame and there was so much alcohol, his breath caught fire and the fire went into his throat and lungs because the lungs and throat was full of air containing alcohol which he was blowing out and his lungs got thoroughly burnt and he passed away. Hearing all this, this person who was waiting for his friend's eyes filled with tears. He lamented the loss of his friend and the freak accident which killed his friend. He cried bitterly and people thronged around him because he was crying, he was lamenting and they all knew who is this person and they thought probably this person is full of remorse and regret. He must be blaming, blaming himself why he is into this habit of drinking so much. He may be shunning himself. Bitterly crying, he called out a servant there and asked him to bring a book of Bible. He asked a servant to bring a book of Bible so that he will take an oath. He will swear by keeping the book in his hand. The people around him thought that this fellow has learnt a lesson now. Probably he has realized that drinking is not good. <coughs> it can kill him. So probably he is now changed and he is taking an oath or he is swearing by keeping Bible in his hand and he will never drink again in his life. The incident has made him understand how dangerous it is to drink alcohol. Okay, Bible was brought to him and they kept the Bible on a neat table. Many people gathered around him to see him swearing. 
this man gently walked to the table kept his hand on the bible he took the bible in his hand and he placed his palm of his right hand on the bible book and sweared saying i am cautious after hearing what happened to my friend i have learnt a lesson henceforth in my life i will never blow the candle flame when i am drunk so he is swearing henceforth i will not blow the candle flame when i am drunk this is the lesson that he did learn and this is what is the change that happened in that person look how much he has learned and what he has learned he did not learn to give up the habit and transform himself completely people who had gathered around him were dismayed because they thought that this person is so changed now after uh, hearing the shocking news of the death of his friend but he has not changed for the good this is what happens when we fail to learn the way that we are supposed to learn this world is a mega growth school mega growth school life doesn't leave anybody you have come to learn you have to learn if you fail to learn the life starts giving you the same lessons it starts creating same circumstances it starts recycling there is a term called recycling what do we mean by recycling let us say you are not a very courageous person life throws a situation at you where you have to become courageous you have to become brave and bold if you fail to learn how to be brave how to be bold perhaps that situation may disappear in some way but again another situation appears in front of you which will force you to become brave and bold if you don't learn then also again a similar situation comes up you are going to be taught till you learn that lesson if you fail to learn that lesson you keep learning and similar situations keep arising again and again and again and that's called as recycling if you want to live a life with full of maturity you need to learn lessons fast you need not require multiple circumstances of similar kind teaching one particular lesson to you learn the lesson as fast as possible it is just that the curriculum is different for different persons we all have come to this mega school of growth to learn and grow and the life keeps throwing several circumstances which is which are ready to teach you in case if you are ready to learn but please remember the curriculum differs from a person to person same kind of circumstances i do not pass through what you pass through because your curriculum is different you may be bold brave and courageous you have come with that in this life probably you may not be having some other quality maybe hard work it's lacking in you so to make you a hard worker or a kayaka yogi karma yogi probably life may create such situations in front of you where you are forced to become a hard worker so that means to say everybody will pass through their own curriculum their own lessons once you learn one lesson let us say patience how to be patient how should be patient how should we be patient even in adverse situations even in very very adverse situations how to remain patient how not to become angry how to tolerate situations if you don't learn that again another situation comes of a different kind 
but calling you to be to be patient to learn patience if you learn it with one incident or one circumstance you move on to another lesson maybe the other lesson how to be honest even in how to be honest even in tough conditions and tough situations if you learn honesty probably another situation may arise where it calls you to be loyal to your to your principles it may expect you to become loyal and remain loyal to what you think when we learn a lesson we would have changed profoundly it is almost as if we shed an old skin each time we get a new lesson it is like shedding the old skin if we don't shed the old skin the new skin cannot appear you might have seen the snakes how they keep shedding the old skin if they fail to shed the old skin the new skin cannot get exposed cannot get exposed if this doesn't happen our learning is incomplete and there is a need for us to learn to learn there is a dire need for many of us to learn to learn because we do not know what it means to learn if you don't learn lessons life is going to teach same lessons repeatedly what i call recycling your current situation in life wherever you are whatever you are and what circumstances you are as of now facing your current reality where you are what you are what circumstances in which you are what situations are cropping up in front of you is nothing more than a complete reflection of the lessons you most need to learn most need to learn sir i am helpless i am helpless i am dependent on somebody and that somebody is shunning me every day cursing me every day scolding me every day okay it's a situation in which what you are supposed to learn how to be patient how to practice tolerance how to remain peaceful despite the situation is so adverse and you have been criticized day in and day out for everything learn learn what is there to learn instead of looking at the fault of others why not we look at ourselves and ask a question what is there to learn from my side in this given situation life is full of ups and downs every up is a success and every down is a failure start focusing on your failures because failure is the place where you learn a lot where you learn a lot failure creates such opportunities for you so that you learn better in success you learn very less the things that you dislike about your life like your irritations your stressors are all nothing more than vehicles that carry the lessons you need to learn see if you are irritated with something if you are stressed with something and if you are uh, having your own troubles probably there are so many lessons to learn from whom you are getting irritated with what particular circumstance you are getting irritated if you are getting irritated that's the place where there is some learning for you where there is some lesson for you if you are getting disturbed by the sight of a person there is something to learn from that person if you are getting very much disturbed by facing a particular situation that situation has come to you as a lesson in disguise please look at it carefully situations people things keep recycling in more and more painful ways if you don't learn the lesson that you are supposed to learn most of the times when problems occur it is because of both the parties you might have seen the 
small scuffles, quarrels, verbal altercations, which start within the family members or between the family members or between the people in the society, between colleagues where you're working at a place. Most of these scuffles and verbal altercations happen when you, when you start dancing mutually. You say something, they say something. You say something, they say something. You show your fist, they show your hand. What is exactly happening here is you both are dancing to a rhythm that you people created. If one of you stop dancing, the other person is forced to stop dancing. What you have to learn now is there is a lesson for you. The lesson is to stop dancing. When you stop dancing, things change. That means to say by changing your behavior, you're tacitly guiding the other person to change his or her behavior. Sir, I stopped, uh, I stopped uh, throwing tantrums at him, sir, but he continued. Yes, let him continue. How long will he continue? Why are you disturbed after you stopped? Simply sit. Let him continue. How long will he continue? Unless you provoke, why will he talk? And how long will he talk even if he talks? Even if he throw tantrums? This is what is the transformation which needs to happen. Mama so say, Anna Tamma, Akka Thangi. A lot of verbal altercations sometimes may keep happening because of differences in opinion. So what is the best way to get rid of these situations? Transform yourself. Change yourself. Stop dancing to the tune. And allow the other person also tacitly to change his behavior. This change or transformation, when happens in us, we have truly learned the lesson. If we have to stop dancing, we should unlearn. What is that unlearning? We have always danced. Always we danced. And always we kept dancing and always we created scuffles, differences, fights altercations always we did it are we ready to unlearn unlearning means change what is a change i decide now and i practice now that i will not dance even if the other person calls me to dance simple you move from known to unknown now no one was dancing the moment if the other person danced. Now you decided not to dance. Okay, let him let him throw tantrums. I will not throw tantrum. Finished. This unlearning is the most important thing by which we learn. But unfortunately, we are not ready to unlearn. So our lives have become very, very difficult. If we mind, if we understand what is true learning, and if true learning is changing and transforming and adopting something which is new and practicing something which is new, implementing something new so that the old disappears and the new appears, learning is incomplete. That's what I mean by learn to learn or learning to learn the back home message is please change if we are not ready to change none of these satsangs are going to help us out we will not grow elderly but we will go we will grow old growing old is not fair grow elderly with this particular message back home i'm completing my lecture for today discourse for today thank you very much for being with me